was more crafty than any other wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God really say to you, <coughs> You must not eat up from the fruit, from the tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat fruit from the trees of the garden, but God did say we must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the and acknowledge that he is risen. We thank you for the good fellowship we had earlier. We thank you, Father, for the people and the, that prepared the food for us and the good food we had. We just ask now, Father God, that you would open our eyes and minds up to the truth of your word. And, and uh, this question came up, and it was about an event. Well, you know, two women got involved in this conversation, and one was over here and one there, and poor old Stuart there. I wish he was here, but he was leading. And this whole head was well, why I bring that up was I was sitting beside my good friend Dwight and they talked about special events in this whole conversation. And I got thinking about what I should say this morning. And I'm going to talk about some of the spiritual events. What day tomorrow is? Monday. <laughs> <laughs> April Fool. There you go. He's from Saskatchewan. He knows all about food. No doubt about it. He's on the same page as me. <laughs> My wife would always say, God played the biggest April Fool joke ever. <laughs> because she met me. <laughs> so anyway, she never let that die. <laughs> Women and their memories. <clears throat> See, ever since I just read it, the fall of mankind. The rest of the man back to himself, and there's been all kinds of things. And I was thinking about the Old Testament when we were sitting in that Bible study, and I got thinking about going home. And after I got home, man became very evil. So anyway, after the flood, then Abraham and them came on the scene. The patriarchs, I call them. You can read about it in Genesis chapter 12. You can read about Isaac in Genesis 21. Jacob in Genesis 25, you know, they ended up in Egypt. And they ended up in slavery. Then the bird of Moses came along. And of course, his life. You can read that in Exodus. How God chose this Moses. He was actually a murderer. Chapter 20, and then in the Leviticus, the law. And of course, all the sacrifice of the, the, and the shedding of blood for the animals over sin, and then eventually came the prophets. And many times I think of that. These people, what would we do? How would people respond today if all of a sudden there was no word from God for hundreds of years? No church, no pulpit, no nothing. In the church, a good friend of mine, pastor, I was invited there and I went there Friday morning. Then there's a resurrection of Jesus Christ, which we're celebrating today. And of course, you read in Acts 1, the ascension of Christ. See, all these things have happened. Then there's one more that's pending. It's coming again. Which hopefully we're all looking, for, looking forward to. You see, all the focus is on this little baby in the manger. Nothing wrong with that to put a lot of attention in Christ. And it's booked. We celebrate it here. All church, Christian churches, celebrate the birth of Christ. There's many different aspects of how we celebrate that with different congregations throughout the world. So I think we all would agree that the birth of lots of opposition from the spiritual leaders at that time and from many other people. And then he did many miracles. Starting with the first, he changed the water into wine. He healed a lot of people of all the diseases. He gives sight. <laughs> you have to give me credit. He calmed the winds. See, Jesus did many things. You know, it always most when we pray and ask for things in Jesus' name, aren't we asking for a miracle in the name of Christ? Of course we are. When we pray for our sick people, we pray for ourselves. <clears throat> Most often we'll close with 
In Jesus' name we ask. Then he picked 12 men. And he wants us to be witnesses for him. Acts 1.8, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. You will be my witness in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. We're at the ends of the earth right here in this community, this church. It's quite a ways away from Jerusalem. And it's also quite a bit east of Rhode Island, the promised land. I just had a guy, which is with Kirk and those that don't live in the promised land. See, as we serve the Lord and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and we look at his birth, we look at his ministry, we're called to be with I'm sure most Christians all over the world pause on Friday to remember the death of their Savior and Lord. We call it Good Friday, good for us, not so good for him. I went to service for an old friend of mine. He's, well, he's actually my best friend in life. We've been, he's a pastor. I was an elder at Shepherding Elder. And he had a wonderful message. He spoke some things there on the Friday morning about the cross that I never thought. So I was so glad I went. You see his death. See it's in Matthew 27, 50. And when Jesus cried out, I gave it a loud voice. He gave up the spirit. Then it says in Mark 8, How much more then will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit, offered himself on blemish to God, cleanses our consciences from acts that lead to death, so that we may serve the living God. They're all very important. I don't think you can put one that's more important than the other. See, the cross is the foundation of forgiveness of our sins for all of us. And that should be very important to us. We're all sinners. We all need the forgiveness of Christ, the washing of his blood. I'm a sinner. I'm born that way, and I've sinned many times in my life. And I probably will sin again. I don't want to, but I probably will. You see, it's pretty important to me that I'm forgiven. See, sin can be, see, we have a great salvation message. It tells us in Revelation 12 11, we are overcome the evil one, all by the power of Christ. So important. Me and my own power, I could never fix my own self. 9.22. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. So important to know that by the blood of Christ we're forgiven. Our conscience is clear. We can go to bed at night without guilt or shame. Of God by his miracles and his teachings. He loved us so much he gave his life for us on the cross. Forgiveness. Now I want to focus on something we're celebrating today, the resurrection. For this life we will have hope in Christ. We are to be pitied more than all men. See, if Christ had raised, been raised, I would have no hope for all my height whiteness. But I know through his resurrection. She's alive forevermore in the arms of Jesus Christ. And that should bring comfort to all of us who have lost loved ones. It's my great hope. We'd be going home from church today to be a huge family gathering in the park. All our kids, grandkids, and dinner and others. And my wife would have done tons of cooking and baby fresh buns and all that stuff. Who was crucified? He is not here. He has risen. Just as he said he. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly, tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have I'm getting along in years. Doesn't bother me. Fortunately, I have pretty decent health for my age. But I know this. Every morning I get for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. Are we living our life to God? Are we doing everything that we possibly can to bring glory and honor to the Father? To be as a servant like Jesus was when he was on earth? To be a drawing hope to those who are lost that do not know the Christ? 
that we're willing to do everything and put our life on the line to serve the Lord Jesus Christ and reach out to the lost and the hurt. Sometimes it's not easy. I don't know what these people do during the week. I know I'm very busy. I wrote a Facebook post this morning and I wrote, wrote it on these scriptures because I've used these scriptures many times when people tell me, oh, a lot of people, have you ever been told that you're living in a fantasy world because you believe that Christ died for you and rose today and is still living 2,000 years later? I, as an individual human being, they're not going to listen to me. But there's something that they have to listen to sooner or later. It's called the Word of God. This is the scriptures I wrote from my own. Then the fall. After that he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James and all the apostles. We live in a haywire country system now, totally different when I'm working on a book, Who Changed Our God? It's going to take me a while to do it because I'm so busy. I haven't even known to when I wrote the other book, I wrote to see what the pandemic was on, and that was one of the great things about it. I had about four or five hours every day. I had nothing to do. I could just sit down and write. Today is a little different. I'm lucky if I get 20 minutes. We live in a time in our country, in the, in the world, with as little respect for God, and most people don't see God's word as any value or truth at all. But anyways, that said, even so, if I was murdered somebody and 500 people witnessed it, even, that, even in our haywire system today, that would be not. He's alive. Whether it's 2,000 years we've been waiting, he's still alive. And it's praise the Lord, he is alive. We should, let's all say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. See, it's just so simple. They think it's easy. So they're not willing to pay the sacrifice of repentance. So what is Jesus doing in heaven now? More than who was raised for the life? It's at the right hand side of God and he's interceding for us now. Isn't that wonderful? It's not great comfort to know that when we pray and ask for miracles in the name of Christ, He's there interceding us on our behalf. Not just for our needs. We cry out many, I cry out way far more times for other people. I probably pray for everybody in this congregation at least once a week, sometimes many times. I have a phone book. Because we read in John 14, 2 to 4, in my father's house there are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going there to prepare a place for you, and if I go prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you with me, that you will also be where I am. You know the way to where I'm going. You know Christ, you know how, you know how where you're going. But if you don't know Christ, you have no idea where you're going, do you? Because you won't accept the fact that you're going to that other place. So you see, I left myself enough time <coughs> to close with it. I'm going to tell you the truth and the light. No man coming to the Father but by me. You can live in all the fantasy worlds you want. You can dream all the things you want to dream. But when you draw your last breath, that is not going to get you into heaven. It tells you in Romans 3.10, you have to admit you're a sinner. We're all sinners. It tells us in Acts 17.30, we have to have a desire to repent, to change, to turn away from our old way of living. It also tells us in the Word, Romans 10, 13. By prayer, we must invite the Lord Jesus Christ to come into our heart as our personal Lord and Savior. We repent. Christ died. He was buried and rose again. 
and we need him to come and live within us as our personal Lord and Savior. I don't know who's watching on social media today. I don't know if any of you in your room have never made a commitment. If you're on social media, you can give us a call. Bow your heads and close your eyes and repeat with me. Dear God, I am a sinner and I need your forgiveness. I believe that Jesus Christ shed his precious blood and died for my sin. I am willing to turn from sin I now invite you, Jesus, to come into my heart as my personal Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. And if that's the first time you did it, though I would encourage you to start with the Gospels. <laughs> Get to know who Christ is. If you know who Christ is, you'll eventually know who God is. Talk to God every day in prayer. He talks to us through his word. He wants us to communicate with him in prayer. And you don't have to be like going to church. For the fellowship and support you're going to need in your journey with Christ. And eventually, hopefully, you'll get to a place that's so important, which I love doing. Tell others about Jesus and what he's done in your life. I could stand here for hours and let us tonight. He sees I've had him for 25 plus years. And last Wednesday, for no reason at all, my left eye started bleeding. Led for hours, just about a drop every 10 minutes. Bing, bing, bing. So I did what I was told one time by a specialist. I made a cold compress with water and held it against my eye for quite a while and eventually quit. And then it swelled up and got pretty sore. So a couple of nights I didn't hardly sleep because I'm not much for pain medication, just the way I am. So you know, and you can't rub it or anything, and you know how high it hurts and it gets itchy, and it just felt like you had dirt in it, okay? And I don't know if you've ever had dirt in your eyes, but it's kind of irritating. But I prayed, and I was at a group, and they prayed for me. That was Thursday night. Appointment, I was gonna go to the funeral, but I know it's very difficult to get in to see a specialist, so I'm gonna keep my appointment. But you see, it's just simple. God answers prayer. Amen. And it's all but a miracle of Christ. Let's close with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, people of different people of life that you call to ministry and to do miraculous things. Way back in the Old Testament. We just thank you for it all. We thank you, Father God, for your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for his birth. Father God, we thank you for the the ministry he, and how he revealed you through his ministry on earth. We thank you for his death on the cross. Father God, we just praise and thank you and worship you for the resurrection that gives us the hope of everlasting life. We thank you, Father God, for the promises, the promise in his word. Father, we just pray that you would bless us and help us to be a blessing to you and bring honor and glory to your name this week and help us to be a blessing to others. We pray for many places in the world, Lord, where the city is happy. We think of the war that's going on in Ukraine and against the Lord. We just pray for the needs of the people in these situations and circumstances. So many innocent people, especially the women and the children, that have been put in horrible circumstances. We hear of thousands and tens of thousands and then without shelter, food, or water. Father God, encourage us and guide us and direct us to do so. And we think of the utter disasters, Lord. We think of like that chip hitting in Baltimore, Lord. We think of those families that are waiting for the bodies of their loved ones to be called. Mm -hmm. We pray your, your comfort and hope upon them, Father. We pray for everyone in this congregation, in this room, that's watching on social media, Father God, that is it we have in the race, the re resurrection of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, that one day we will be home in heaven with our loved ones. Mm -hmm. So we give us to you every need that's in this congregation. We lift it up before you. We ask, Father, by the power of your 